P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's round up time on the double R bar. So sell your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribed stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Gail Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Hiya, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Are you looking forward to breakfast tomorrow morning, buckaroos? You are if Mom has post cereals on the shelf. Because post cereals are good. Mom knows just as we do that you can count on anything bearing the brand name post. There's a little settlement of people just beyond our mountains, a village called Hideaway, nestled in a little valley. The only way of getting to it is through a rough mountain pass on Jake Gollick's ranch. You boys let me talk to Jake when we get inside. I'm more apt to be calm about this than the rest of you. Well, what is this? A committee, Jake. Can we come in? Yeah, come on. We won't disturb you long. Your neighbors and I thought we ought to have a little meeting. Yeah, what about? Folks at Hideaway. You close the pass that runs through your land to their settlement. I have, and it's going to stay closed. I put armed riders at both ends to see that it does. Would you mind telling us why? What's the difference? I'm within my rights. I own the pass. I can do what I want with my own land. Yes, I suppose you can, Jake. But folks at Hideaway want to get in and out of their village. They want to haul produce to the market. They want to carry their supplies in, and they can't with the pass closed. There's no other route they can use. That's a tough luck. Now, wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Let's get Jake's side of this story, if he has a side. Why did you close the pass, Jake? I got my own reasons, and they don't concern nobody but me. And that pass is going to stay closed as long as I own this ranch. And that's all there is to say. That's all I'm going to say. Now, goodbye to you. No, Jake, that's not all. Go ahead, answer the door. We'll finish when you see who it is. I've already finished. Uh, howdy, Jake. How are you? What are you doing, Rogers? Backing up this committee? He has company, Roy. I hope we don't have to wait. I'm sorry, Jake. We didn't know you had visitors. Stop pretending, Rogers. I know you're with him. Come on in. Thanks. I believe a will. I'll just tell you the same as I told them. Howdy, Fred. Hi, boys. Howdy, Roy. Hey, what what's everybody look so glum about? Maybe they've heard the news. Have you? Jake, the doctor just called. A message came over the wire from Hideaway. Jane Lamprey's little girl is sick. Doc thinks it's the polio. Yeah, okay. well, he tried to go over, but your riders stopped him at the entrance of the pass. My riders were following orders. Jake, if the little girl does have polio and the doc isn't able to treat her, she may be crippled for life. I'm asking you for her to let the doc come and go. We can settle about everything else later. That pass stays closed. Wear your guns loose, boys. We'll take the duck through. No, no, wait a minute. That won't be necessary. The duck can make at least one trip another way. It's slow and not as convenient, especially for a man of Doc's age, but I'm sure he'll risk it. You're within your rights, Jake, but I'd hate to live your life if that little girl is crippled. I'd hate to live it anyway after this. Come on. Let's get Doc on his way as quick as we can. Fred Pappert and his committee gather round Roy, Dale, and Jonah as they prepare the Doc for his trip. Towering above them is a ski toll, nothing more than a long line of cable extending up over jagged cliffs to the top of a mountain and an open seat on which the Doc will be strapped. He will be carried through the air to the mountaintop. There he's to be met by the mayor of Hideaway ride down the less dangerous slope to the village. Oh, don't bother fussing, Joe Roy. An awful lot depends on you, Doc. 
I figure if I strap you in good, you won't change your mind and get off before you're there. Well, to tell the truth, I might. I don't favor hikes much, especially when there's nothing beneath my feet. <laughs> yeah, that ought to do it. Feel comfortable? Oh, comfortable, but not very easy. Where's my bag? Here you are. I'll just put it in your lap. Yeah. First time I've gone mountain climbing in 20 years. <laughs> I thought I was all through with that kind of thing. Take care of that little girl, Doc. Pull her through. I'll do my best. If there's anything you need or any help we can give, we'll be ready. I know you will. All right, Bob. You can start her. We're ready. The people gathered near the little donkey engine feel a tightness come to their throats as they watch the fragile figure of the old doctor being swung away high over the rough crags. He's on an errand of mercy. In his hands and mind and heart may be the difference between life and death for a tiny girl. But Roy and his friends are not the only ones who see the doctor swaying perilously on his journey to the mountaintop. Two others watch from some distance away and ride off when the journey has been completed. A sick kid. Everybody in the country will be against us, Jake. We should have let the dock, but nobody else go through. As I'll under hideaway. Richfield under the whole valley, and we can't get it until we freeze those people out. They won't sell unless we make them want to sell. We've got to do it fast before somebody else discovers that oil. They'll band together to fight us now. We won't... Shut up! A... There's only one thing to do now. Go on the same way we've been going, but put on more power. Oh, They'll have to use that ski toe more than once. They'll want medicine carried over. The doctor will want to come back. The next trip they make, Fox, and the cable will snap. Now get some rest. We'll go to work after dark. Hey, how are you coming? Slow. This draw cable is stuck. Yeah, I guess we're all right. Holding the cable behind your cut like this, they don't feel the vibrations down at the station. Now watch it there. They still down there? Yeah, at least one person. I can spot him moving around. Now, let's see that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's plenty deep. We want the load to go up a ways before the cable frays and snaps. We don't want it to break too soon. <laughs> Buttermilk. Whoa. Oh, well, Jonah. I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Hey, hey, what, what, what's all that stuff? Doc wants it for the little girl. Give us a hand, will you? Hey, you betcha. She's pretty sick, Jonah. The doc called last night for these things, and Roy had to ride all the way to Squaw Creek for him. He just got back at daylight. And I guess you're tired, huh, Roy? I don't care how tired I get as long as the little girl gets better. Well, she will, won't she? We don't know. Oh, doggies. You must be pretty tired yourself, Jonah. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm more what you might call blighted than tired. Blighted? Yeah, literary word, Roy. See, there weren't nobody around here all night, and I didn't dare sleep for fear Doc had signal he wanted to come back, so I decided to read the first chapter of my book over. Now, set this right in the seat, Jonah. Mm -hmm. We'll put the other things on top of it. <laughs> I told you Dorothy May has got the first chapter all typed, didn't I? Why, no. Right on top, Dale. We'll tie them together. Okay. See, that, that's why I'm blighted, on account of the typing. Uh, didn't Dorothy May do a good job? Well, of course, I guess you can't expect a woman who has long lashes and a fetch-me-a-sandwich smile to have brains, too. Why, Jonah. Well, I know, but you see, there's one place there that I put down about the time Nightmare Ned dreamed he was a rooster and crowed the general awake. Naturally, I says, the general was discombobulated. <laughs> what? Well, Dorothy May puts an extra L and a Y on natural. <laughs> yeah, and how do you think she spelled discombobulated? How? P-E-R-T-U-R-B-E-D, perturbed. No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, and her school mom. I guess we're all set. The load's tight and it seems to be balanced. Uh, Jonah, you want to start the engine and we'll pull her up? Yeah, sure thing. I'm glad now I was careful to keep steam up all night. Roy... Say a prayer that this equipment gets to the other side all right, and that uh, it helps her. I have, Dale. I said a prayer all the way back from Squaw Creek. Uh, uh. 
The draw cable tightens, and a seat loaded with precious equipment begins its journey up over the crags toward the mountaintop. A joyful sight to the free people on the ground. The seat is swung out into the air, above the impassable boulders and cliffs. It travels steadily upward. Roy and Dale can see tiny figures on the peak. Men the old doc has sent to bring the supplies down to his little patient. Then, without warning, the cargo seems to stop. It dangles in midair, pulling backwards. A full second. The cable snaps. The seat starts tearing back downward. Look out, Roy! Stand back! Stand back! The draw cable's broken! Ah! It's gone! All the equipment broken! Roy, there's not a piece left that's whole. Well, take it easy, Dale. Oh, convolution. It was just the draw cable, not the overhead cable. We can splice this all right. But the little girl! Jonah, get on your horse. Ride for the Squaw Creek Hospital as hard as you can. Tell them to duplicate the equipment they gave me. I'll ride it charge all the way. It'll be night before he can get back, Roy. Maybe not till morning. You head to the nearest telephone, Dale. Call the doctor. Tell him what the situation is and that we'll have new equipment here as soon as possible. Sure, sure. And tell him to keep that little girl alive. No matter what else happens, he's got to keep her alive. Say, how about letting the Indians be your guide to heap good eating? Rich, nourishing corn was their favorite food. And bet you one bowlful of new, improved post-toasties will make those honest Indian cornflakes your favorite cereal, too. Packed with sweet kernel flavor, so crisp and fresh they won't mush up in milk. Post-toasties, the heap good cornflakes. Best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Yes, everybody's wild about post toasties, those fresh tasting corn flakes. So be a good Indian, Mom. Before your band hits the trail, fortify them with big breakfast bowlfuls of flavor packed post toasties. Heap Good nourishment with sugar and cream. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Dale has hurried away to telephone the old doc so that he will know of the disaster. Jonah is somewhere on the road to Squaw Creek riding for the hospital as no man has ever ridden the trail before. And Roy is at the ski toe, working to splice the draw cable, his hands cut and bruised by the jagged wires. Not far from Roy, but hidden by an intervening knoll, are two men on horseback, Jake Gullick and Bill Foxen. Uh, he's fixing it. Rogers is fixing that cable. If that kid's as sick as they say she is, they'll never get back with more stuff for her in time. That's not the point. They'll try and they'll send it up to the dock. What we got to do is discourage the people and hide away. Keep hitting them until they believe nothing can ever get through to them. If we try to cut the draw cable again... Ah, it's no good. Now, you used to have a fake Department of Justice badge. I still have. Let's get it and ride partway to Squaw Creek. We can use that badge to good advantage there. Well, hi there, Bullet. I brought Bullet and the sheriff both, Roy. Well, good for you. I'll feel better now that the sheriff's here. Uh, wish they'd been here sooner. I got a call through to the doctor. He said he'd try to hold the fort until the supplies come. Try? Well, the patient isn't doing very well, Roy. Table fixed, Roy. Yeah, I've been sitting here. If I could do something, ride up the other side of the mountain, fight somebody. There's nothing you can do, Roy. Oh, no, there isn't. Jonah will be back as soon as he can get here. I'm surprised you didn't drive right on through Garlic's Pass when this come up, Roy. I wish now I had. What stopped you? Two things, I guess. First, the law. Garlic is within his rights legally, even if he isn't from any other standpoint. And second... I knew there'd be killings if we tried to drive through. This way seemed better than a killing. Hmm. I'll just splice this cable. Why? 
Did you have to cut it off square? Looks to me as though... All right, all right. Uh, put the cable down. Let it be. I know. What's the matter? You noticed the same thing, then. Yeah. Noticed sure. what? The cable didn't break. Somebody used a hacksaw on it. No. Well, they cut it part way through, Dale. Enough so the weight of the loaded seat pulling back would break it. I wasn't going to say anything. Somebody would be that... I'm mighty glad you folks in Bullet are here. No one has tampered with the toe since you've been gone. But it's good to know there'll be four on guard until Jonah gets back instead of one. Two men wait in a wood area alongside the trail to Squaw Creek. One is masked. The other wears a badge reading, U.S. Department of Justice. Both look steadily in the direction of Squaw Creek. Far in the distance, they see a rider coming toward them. That's Roy's sidekick, I think. Now, you know what to do, don't you, Watson? Don't worry about me. Just get him off the trail and keep him off long enough for me to slip this bundle of black powder in with the other stuff he's carrying. That's all I ask. Sure, sure. But wear your mask just in case. The old boy knows you. Incidentally, you haven't got black powder in that package. What? I figured dynamite would bust things up better, Gullick. <laughs> I can't say you're not right. You stay here. I'll ride up on the trail and stop him. Bill Foxen rides out onto the trail, dismounts, and faces the oncoming Jonah, waving his arms frantically, being careful to display the important badge. Oh, 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 thank you. Now, look, mister, I'm in a hurry. Justice Department. Government. You're a government man? Get down off your horse. Now, look, I ain't got no time. A sick little girl is Get waiting. down off your horse. I'll remember this when it comes time to vote again, I bet you. I need a witness to establish that a suspect was in this territory. But I have to get this on... This won't take long. Leave your horse here. Now, these footprints around the campfire, I want you to observe. As Jonah and the fake federal man cross the trail and disappear, Jake Gullick, still masked, runs from the wooded area carrying the package of dynamite. Quickly, efficiently, he loosens the pack on Jonah's horse places the package in the middle so that it appears to be part of the supplies dispensed by the hospital. He rearranges and ties the pack, then disappears into the woods. Well, can I go now? You got my identification. Once more, you witnessed the footprint showing a broken heel. They were near the campfire. Yeah, practically in it. You're prepared to swear that the fire was still smoldering? Real hot. All right. Go ahead. No, convolution. Get out of here, Titus. Ha! Ha! Gullick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything's all set. All we got to do now is take our rifles and wait. When they try to send a load up on that ski toe, aim for that dynamite and it'll blow them to smithereens. <laughs> To hang a medal on you. That was real speed. Yeah, well, I would have got here sooner except for a nosy federal man. Yeah. Sure, a big pack of stuff the hospital give me. I'll unbuckle it, Roy. You get the seat ready. What are you doing here, Tin Star? Just dropped around to see what a literary man looks like. And by dog, as tired as I am, I won't feel like putting down no words tonight. Roy, do you want to untie the supplies? Oh, I think they'll ride like that, Dale. It'll save time anyway. If you hold them on the seat... I'll rope them in, Sheriff. All right. Hey, who's this coming? Fred Pappert? It sure is. Hey, what's the matter, Fred? You're riding like you got Indians on the trail. Oh, oh boy. Did I get here in time? You haven't sent the supplies over yet. We're just about ready to. Now the doc phoned the little girl. Oh, I'm all out of breath. Oh, come on, Fred. What about the little girl? The doc says she's sinking. Oh, the oh. poor thing. Yeah, he needs help. He wants to know if Dale can ride the ski toe over. I sure can. Well, I don't want you taking a chance, Roy, Dale. Boy, that little girl. Oh, all right. You can go, but nothing better happen to that ski toe this time. Oh, we know the toe is okay this time, Roy. We've watched it every minute. Well, it better be. I guess the best way is for me to sit on the seat and hold the supplies, isn't it? You'll have to tie them on, of course. Dale seats herself on the ski toe, and the sheriff gives her the heavy bundle of supplies. Reluctantly, almost unwillingly... Roy ropes them to the sides so there's no chance of her getting loose and falling. He hesitates, 
an expression of apprehension on his face, then turns toward the steam engine. Quiet, Bullet. He signals Jonah to start it. The draw cable tightens. Dale is whisked off the ground, up over the boulders. She waves one hand above the great bundle of supplies and is swung higher over the first chasm, over the ugly perpendicular cliffs. She's in midair. That was a shot. They're shooting at the Dale. Where are they, bullets? Do you see them, fella? Take them, boy. Take them. Bullet. Boy, boy makes a flying mount on trigger. And a him. The sheriff and Fred Pavard run to their horses to follow. Look there, Trigger. Get him, bullet. Get him, boy. There, Roy, just ahead. Go cool. them. They came out from behind those boulders. They're running for their horses. Bring them down, Roy. Not over their heads. Bring them down. I want to get my hands on them. A shot's too good for him. Roy urges Trigger on, and the heroic horse gives a burst of speed that carries him up, 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 until he's directly behind the two escaping outlaws. Roy's face is grim now, a grimness that bespeaks of terrible things to come. The outlaws are racing to save their lives. Trigger gives an extra spurt of speed. Roy is directly between the two men. Suddenly, he flings both arms out, grabbing for the outlaws. He pulls them both from their horses. Three men hit the ground, hoops flashing all about them. They roll, claw, fight. Bullet lunges at them, grabs Joe Fox and shakes him as he would shake a rat. Roy is free to take care of Gullick, and take care of him he does. Get up! Get up, Get up here, Gullick! Get up, Roy! I've had enough! Get up, I say! You've got more coming! No, oh, no. Oh, I've had enough! Hey, Roy, stop it! Stop it! Get up here! These men have had enough, Roy! Call up Bullet, Roy! Before he kills that other man! Right! Yeah, Bullet! That's it, boy. Stand guard. All right, now, Roy. Just take it easy. Everything's okay. I'm sorry, Sheriff. They were shooting at Dale. Help us on that ski lift. I lost myself for a minute, I guess. You take them, will you? I want to ride back and see if Jonah got Dale across all right. You know, along with Roy, Dale, and Trigger, fans all over the country have been clamoring for another favorite these days. You bet, it's that exciting new discovery, Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. There isn't any time of day that Post Sugar Crisp doesn't fill the bill. At the breakfast table, as an extra delicious cereal, between meals for a tasty snack, or right along with you, wherever you go, like candy, right out of the package. Yes, sir, this Sugar Crisp jingle really sums it up. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp is delicious all day long. And it's such wholesome eating, too. Wholesome wheat puffed to a fluffy lightness and then coated with sugar and honey for flavor. Plus, quick energy. Try Post Sugar Crisp yourself. But remember, one package is never enough. Better start with two. Get the package with the three little bears on the front. Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, sir, Roy. Quick as Dale got over to the other side, she turned around and waved. Oh, I'm sure thankful for that. Yeah. She was so far away, she looked real small, and I couldn't see very good. But I'll swear she was a smiling. And she probably was, Jonah. But you can bet your life she was a mighty scared girl when she was swinging out over those cliffs. Yeah, well, I scared fur, if the truth be known. They'll make it right. You bet. Well, Tin Star, you done it again. I done what? Well, you gone and arrested a federal man. A uh, federal? Yes, that fellow with the swelled-up lips there belongs to the United States Department of Justice. Now, wait. Yeah, he's the officer who stopped me on my way back from Squaw Creek and asked me to help him with some clues. Oh, boy, if you ain't a mess, I never seen one. Yes, soldier boy, I found the badge he was carrying. Probably good enough imitation to fool a literary man, but it didn't fool me. Well, it didn't fool you. Fake, huh? You go back to your scribbling. I'll see that you aren't bothered by imposters anymore. Oh, poo-poo. Uh, Jonah, come on. I want to get to the telephone and find out how the little girl is. Hmm. 
Can't get a connection, huh? The operator will have it in a minute. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Roy, friend, uh, while you're waiting, uh, could you give me some advice? Well, I'll try. Um, uh, what kind of an auto would you get if you was me? Auto? Yeah, well, you see, it was like this, Roy. I said it was like this. The other night, Dorothy May and me was a-talking. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'd stop by to see how much of my book she had typed. Uh, pure business, Roy. And it was a nice evening, uh, stars and all that. Yeah? Yeah. So I says, uh, Dorothy May, you know you ought to get out of the house more. I'd I'd be glad to take you for a ride, uh, nice evenings like this. <laughs> uh, meaning, of course, a horseback ride. Oh, sure. Yeah. And she says, why, Mr. Wilde, I would love to go. Uh, when did you get a new car? Is it a sedan or a convertible? <laughs> Just a minute. Hello? Is that you, Dale? You bet we got him. Jake Gollick and a fellow named Bill Foxen. How are you by now? That's good. She's... Hold on, let me tell Jonah. Jonah? Eh? Dale says that uh, Doc thinks the little girl has better than an even chance. She'll live, Jonah. She'll be all right. <laughs> Just received a letter from my girl in San Antonio. It said that she would be my bride. I know she really loves me, and her heart is true. So I guess I'd better take a ride. I'll hop up on my pony and I'll ride away down the trail to San Antonio. I can see her standing waiting by the garden gate, and she waits for me alone. Through the hills and o'er the plains we'll ride, ride, ride. I won't rest until I have her by my side. Roll on, little pony, let that old wind moan. I'm heading back to San Antonio, down the trail to San Antonio. saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Bob Griffin, Charles Seal, and Pat McGeehan. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep 
keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails. 